Good morning beautiful people welcome to my channel today we are discussing healer astrology series and in this series we are looking at only the healing parts of Vedic astrology which can be used for all healers of all kinds we have lots of different kinds of healers coming up so without further ado let me start the presentation and take you there step by step give me a minute here there we go right as you can see on the screen here we have rising attributes what is the rising sign attributes we talk of rising signs but what is a rising sign rising sign is that sign which rises over the east at the time where you were born that's the ascendant or the rising sign yes that's the east for me over here so that's where it rises on the horizon whichever sign is rising now there are certain characteristics of the rising signs of different kind of zodiac signs which Vedic astrology uses. What are their attributes? I want you to look at the screen over here now. We have three types of rising signs. One is called head rising sign, one is called back rising sign, and one is both. Only one is both, which is Pisces. But the green ones here marked in the inner circle are all head rising signs. We'll tell you in a minute what these are. <coughs> Meaning what? What does it mean? The head rising signs are Gemini number 3, Leo number 5, Virgo number 6, Libra number 7, Scorpio number 8 and Aquarius number 11. These are marked in the inner circle over there and these are the head rising. Meaning what? When these signs are rising, you know each one of these zodiac signs has got an animal representation, right? The way the stars are arranged in the sky, there's a certain head part of the animal and there's a certain tail or the end part of the body. The way the stars look when it is rising, when the sign is rising, for these signs, for Gemini, Leo, Libra, Virgo, Scorpio and Aquarius, the head rises first out of the horizon. That's why it's called head rising first. The back rising ones are Aries, Taurus. You can see they follow the colors on the screen. Number one, Aries. Number two, Taurus. Number four, Cancer. Number nine, Sagittarius. Number 10, Capricorn. Okay. These are the back rising. Means these are almost rising like inverted. The head is down. First, the back rises over the horizon and then the head comes last. These are called back rising kind of zodiac signs. Imagine that there's a whole technology involved which is either head is rising first out of the horizon or the back is rising and these are very different. These have nothing to do with earth, air, fire, water. These are all kinds of mixtures. There are only two classifications. Pisces is the only sign which is head and back both rising almost like a person bent like that fully inverted right head and feet both coming out first that is both rising that's only Pisces what does this help us like in terms of healing in terms of planets in terms of science what does this mean okay this means that a naturally here are the rules one two and three on the screen naturally benefic and we talked about naturally benefic planets which are the naturally benefic planets Jupiter, Venus, waxing moon means one going towards from the new moon to the full moon is waxing moon. Okay. Or Mercury unassociated with malefics. Like I mentioned in the previous three ones, we are doing the basics of healing. Go through the previous videos in this playlist. Mercury by itself has no energy. It, whichever planet it comes to associate with a naturally benefic or malefic, it becomes like that. Mercury unassociated with malefix occupies a head rising constellation, which is what? Like we saw here, the green marked ones, Gemini, Leo, Virgo, etc. It becomes more benefic. If a benefic planet comes in the head rising signs or houses, wherever they are placed, depending upon ascendant, it becomes more benefic. Number two. <coughs> A naturally malefic planet like Saturn, Mars, Rahu or Ketu or the north and south node of the moon and waning moon means moon going from full moon towards new moon. Okay, it's the waning moon. And or Mercury associated with malefics like these guys. Malefics are who are naturally prone to do harmful things. 
okay bring about limitation that kind of naturally it becomes more malefic if it's in the back rising signs back rising signs are those ones light purple over there right which is aries taurus cancer sagittarius capricorn by extension number 3 point a benefic in a back rising sign loses some of its benefic nature like jupiter if it falls in by using this rule this is the rule jupiter is naturally benefic so if it falls in the sign of aries or taurus or cancer or sagittarius or capricorn it loses some of its strength benefic nature second point of this number 3 is a malefic in a head rising sign loses some of its malefic nature bad nature for example if saturn comes in gemini in the fall falls in the sign of gemini or leo or virgo or libra or scorpio or aquarius it loses some of its bad nature so to speak that's what we are talking about here okay so this thing for budding astrologers and for people who are just learning you can use this to know even the health part of it we are talking about healing here and why i have stuck in that corner you can see a table on the right hand bottom corner the planets the natural friends their enemies and the neutral neutralities for that particular planet for example the first line if you see sun is a friend to moon mars jupiter enemy with venus and saturn neutral to mercury you read it in horizontal rows right why i have stuck in there is because you have all these signs here now sun enemy is venus and saturn right so for a leo ascendant the enemical part will be where venus and saturn rule for example libra and taurus as well as aquarius and capricorn now if i place jupiter in the back rising signs in capricorn or sagittarius it loses some of its sign and if i place it in the head rising sign like aquarius it is slightly more benefic right because sun is a friend of jupiter jupiter naturally is a friend of the leo ascendant because sun is looking at everything but where it loses some of its strength is if it's placed in the back rising signs and gain some of its strength is if it's placed in the green houses wherever the houses are doesn't matter where the houses are we are talking about signs only so each sign for example i talked about earlier if a leo ascendant which we are speaking of each sign has got certain ascendant ruler the lord of the ascendant now for a leo ascendant virgo becomes the second house libra becomes the third house <clears throat> and venus is ruling the third house right but venus is an enemy of sun as you can see in the table so if it's placed here as it is it is enemical but if it's placed in the head rising sign venus loses some of its malefic aspect towards this although venus is a natural benefic it will gain the beneficiary for this leo ascendant whereas if it's placed in the back rising ones like capricorn it will lose even more of its nature here it gains in libra for a leo ascendant if venus is placed in third house it's better than if it's placed in sixth house you see you can take this analysis in any way you want even for the health and we will talk be talking about this when we come to nakshatras and when when i take up case studies so if you are watching this keep watching i am bringing more and more stuff i will bring more, all the individual nakshatras as well and we are keeping a focus here mainly on the healing aspect if you are talking about the healing aspect there are certain things within vedic astrology which can help us which can help us know it kind of modify it kind of take care of it so that people don't fall sick right and um thank you for all your likes shares and subscribes and i'll catch you on the next one where we begin the nakshatras yay take care be safe have a great day